Alright everyone, now that we have our lighting set up, we're ready to hop into Kismet and start putting all the pieces together. So the very first thing we want to do is select this light right here, and this is the light that's going to be taking the damage. So go ahead and hop into Kismet, right click, and hit New Event using Interp Actor to Take Damage. Now first of all, let's go ahead and bump this damage threshold down to, let's say, 10. Actually, let's go ahead and say 5. So basically whenever we shoot it, then this output is going to fire. So the very first thing we need to do is, again, remember from last tutorials I said, we're going to re be replacing this light, which is the glowing light, with this light, which is the busted out light. So go ahead and we need an object to symbolize this light. So select that light, right click, and hit new object variable using interp actor 2. Now we're going to be having a bunch of variables so it's probably a good idea to comment these and just put like lit up light, looks pretty good. And now we need an object to symbolize this right here so go ahead and select that and right click new object and we'll just go ahead and write um, busted light. So now this object symbolizes this and this object symbolizes this and remember by default as soon as we start our level this is visible right here and this is hidden so just keep that in mind so now what we need is a way to toggle this off and this on and remember from tutorial like 52 or 50 or something we can do that by adding a new action toggle toggle hidden and this pretty much toggles between the visibility whether something is hidden or unhidden so now let me go ahead and drag that over and I'm just going to go ahead and hit toggle because if you hit hide it's going to make both of these disappear if you hit unhide it's going to be make both of them appear if you hit toggle it's going to change the states of them so when we toggle this one since it's on by default it's going to hide it and since we toggle this one since it's off by default it's going to make it appear pretty cool huh so that is where toggle comes in handy now let me just go ahead and actually select both of these and move them down a little bit and I guess I might as well play my level right now to show you guys before I move on to the next step I'm gonna hit play from here and look what happens actually let me get a kinda of better view that's probably a better view now by default this is I don't know what's it called unhidden visible and this is hidden over here so now let me go ahead and shoot this and look what happens this one hides and this one appears pretty cool huh so now let's hop back into kismet and get a better view in my perspective view and we want to change a couple more things the very first thing we want to do is we want to shut off this spotlight so in order to do that we need to go ahead and I guess we can do this first go ahead and add a new object variable and this of course represents the spotlight I think that's pretty apparent we don't need to comment that so if you just go ahead and drag that over here and now what we need to do is toggle this now toggle hidden is for making things visible and invisible but whenever you're toggling lights you just need a regular toggle switch so go ahead and add new action toggle and toggle and now let me go ahead and output this to toggle we could go ahead and put it turn off because we want it to turn off the light but hey since we're using toggle yeah I just you know whatever floats your boat so now what's gonna happen is this whenever we shoot our light it's gonna turn our light switch off which is this light or I don't want to say light switch it's gonna turn our spotlight off and it's also gonna make this disappear and this appear so that's pretty cool so let me go ahead and preview that play from here make sure everything's working so far and also aside from making sure that this disappears and this appears take a look at our ground where our spotlight is lighting up the ground and I'm not close enough there we go so now whenever I shoot that check it out our light has now turned off but the one last thing we need to change is we need to move this in the exact location of this so in order to do that probably the best way is to go in my side view scroll in even more and make sure that they sit right on top of each other and also in 
All right, so make sure that they are indeed right on top of each other. So that way, whenever we replace them and make one visible and one is invisible, it looks like it's the same light going on. So now, for one last time, I'm going to go ahead and hit play from here and check it out. I'm going to go ahead, let me get a real good angle to show you guys. If I go ahead and shoot this, the light now looks like it blows out and the spotlight disappears. Pretty cool, huh? And now you shoot it again and nothing happens. Just as we want it to. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot that one more time. You know, not really demonstrating anything more, just having some fun. It blows out and our spotlight disappears. And if you wanted to, a good idea would be to put a sound in here, like maybe a glass breaking sound or a light popping sound. And it would just, you know, give a better effect. But one last time, what's going on is whenever our interp actor, which was right here, took damage, the first thing it did is it toggled the spotlight off. So this light shut off the game light. The other thing it did is it took this emissive light right here, or the light with the emissive properties, and it switched it with this light right here, which was basically the busted light mesh. So hopefully you guys understand how to blow out lights using the UDK. Again, a really cool effect, and it definitely enhances it if you would add a sound. But you know, you guys already know how to do that. You don't need me to walk you through that. So that's all I have for you in this tutorial. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will smell you guys later.